Good afternoon, everybody. We are the Talking Hats coming to you live on this Thursday afternoon. Um, you can reach us on Twitter at the Talking Hats, on Gmail at the Talking Hats Podcast at gmail.com, the Talking Hats HD on TikTok, or call us at 720-735-2342. Um, been anxious to get some, uh, couldn't wait till Saturday. There's so much going on in the sports world these days, today, uh, this week, the past couple of weeks. I just wanted to uh, get this going. So. Yeah, let's, uh, how has your day been so far? I know you've got the day off today. Yeah, happy Veterans Day to everybody who has served and who Definitely. has um, who has served this great country. So what has not happened in the sports world? Let's first talk about Jokic versus Morris. Oh, gosh. Everybody's, <laughs> everybody's talking about how, why this, that. My personal opinion is... Morris was totally wrong. The way he fouled Jokic, yeah. that was a dirty play. I mean, that was no a question. dirty, dirty play because Jokic's knee bent. Like he knew what he Morris knew what he was doing. Yeah. I mean, he knew what he was doing because the way he came in, Jokic was already going for the shot. All he had to do was hug him or foul him on the arm, not mm -hmm. hit his knee the way he did it. And with Jokic retaliated, that's I mean, to me, you don't turn your back on somebody and then not expect to get like like dealt with, in my opinion. Because in all honesty, Jokic was like, hey, this is my career. I almost ended my entire season because of, of your ignorance and stupidity. And when I, I thought, you know, when I first saw, I was like, okay, it's not bad. Or, you know, maybe it was just some tiff. But when you actually see it in slow motion, it was bad. <laughs> like, it was Jokic is dirty. Deep. play. Yeah. Very dirty play. And Morris, it, which one is this? Is this Markeith or, or, or the other one? I forgot which twin. You know what? <laughs> I, should, I should have looked that up. <laughs> That's I okay. Like Marcus. But, I think it's Marcus. Because I think Marcus. Keith came out after the fact and um, was like defending his brother. But um, let me let me verify oh, this. Yeah. And I'm going to tell this. Um, uh, Jimmy Butler does not know who he's messing, messing with because these boys are from Serbia. No. Okay. No. Yeah. Serbian guys, like Serbian individuals, they have that hard nosed kind of like old school mentality that. It is Marcus. It is Marcus. Okay, yeah. yeah. Marcus is notoriously known for things in the NBA that he's he's been kind of kind of a brazen in. But oh, both I'll of say them. this: they're both <laughs> both guys you want on your team, not really guys right. you want to play against because you don't know what <laughs> what might happen. Right. <laughs> and onto that fight with Jimmy Butler trying to clap at at um, Jokic and everything, I was like, you have no idea who you guys are messing with because these no. Serbian boys. They're, they're rough and tough. Like, if you saw their upbringing, it's the same as if you go to any kind of housing projects in anywhere in the United States. These guys don't play. Like, these guys are tough, and they're mentally tough, and they will handle their business. So, I mean, I was shocked by how people are, like, coming at Jokic for doing it. I mean, I like Shaq's response, and I, and I do like um, Charles, um, Charles Barkley's response, that you can't, like – find one person X amount of money and, and find another person an extraordinary amount of money and say that's equal. Like, I think both players should have been fined the same amount and both players should have been suspended. But that's just me. No, I couldn't agree more. Um, and to touch on, you know, the Jokic brothers, um, there was something about like, they gave him some kind of severe punishment because he refused to climb a tree when he was a kid. Like they don't, in this part of the world, they don't mess around. And I'm going to share my screen here real quick. There is a picture of his brothers in the stands reacting when uh, when the fall happened. Um, you can probably see that right now. Those That's yeah. his brothers. And you can see the altercation <laughs> going on in the court right there. They were ready to storm the court if it got, you know, if it didn't get broken up. Um, they do not mess around. They defend their brother. They actually created a Twitter account to clap back <laughs> at, uh, at, at, at Jimmy Butler and the Morris brothers. Uh, Wait, I think Jimmy yeah, Butler got involved? Well, he on the court, uh, that issue. But then Keith, um, after the fact, has started tweeting some stuff out. So they tweet, They created a Twitter account just to respond to his, oh, his Twitter. They're, they're like, they were, they're, I'm paraphrasing here, but they were like, we should end this where it is. Um, you don't want to take this any further. And hearing them dudes say stuff like that, like I, you can say you're, you can think you're tough and from the roughest neighborhood or whatever, but these dudes from this part of the world, they don't mess around. They're, they're not joking. Like the, they created this on Twitter. 
But to them, it's not an internet beef. This is real. So yeah. I'm not saying you should fear any other man, anything like that. But you, you should be well, thinking like, is it worth my career to pursue this, or should yeah. I just, uh, just you know, let it be. squash this beef where it is? You know. <laughs> yeah, because those guys, man, they don't. They, I mean, I shouldn't say this, but it looks like they're connected in some way, shape, or form, <laughs> in some other like. Because you don't write be. on. I mean, you don't write on Twitter <laughs> what you said and not have any backing. Like you can't they, say, hey. Like we can end it here. We can take it somewhere else. That's yeah. like, it, that's some like fighting words. <laughs> that's like, I'll care, how, I'll care how tough I am. I'm going to go ahead and uh, swallow my pride and just let this go. Leave it where it is. Yeah. yeah. But, you, you remember that Key and Peel skit? Like when they were just going back and forth and uh, one of the guys, it was, it was like a USC fighter. They were all going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then one of the guys like, I'm just going to end you. He's like, you, you know, we're just joking, right? This is just like to build up the fight. This just is hype, hype just it. Hype. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is what it reminds me of. It reminds yeah. me of like Jokic is like the, that hardcore stone cold guy. And Jimmy Butler and, and Morris was like, hey, what are you going to do about it? We're just talking and everything. And some people don't talk. No, some he's not. No, no. Yeah, so, they're, uh, they're not just talking. They're not kidding. Yeah. Uh, whether they're no, connected or not, uh, they're going right. to take any threat to their brother seriously. seriously. And, and I will be is the he same the way, oldest or so youngest? I get it. Uh, yeah, is I think he he's younger than them, too. I think he's younger than them. Oh, he's younger. Oh, so. okay. So, mm, so that makes a huge difference, too. Because... And they're all giants. All three of them are, are giants. He's seven foot two or something. And they're all oh. they're right there with him. They're in the family picture. Uh, they're right there. Oh. With, they're big dudes. Um, so they're very tall individuals. Yeah. But oh, wow, uh, okay. back to his reaction from the file. First of all, the file was, of course, dirty. Um, when you're going to follow somebody in that situation to stop a fast break, you just, you know, you mm -hmm. grab the arm, I grab the jersey, you know, a little tug. Mm -hmm. He came up, first of all, behind his back. And like, mm -hmm. he, a smaller guy would have been leveled by that kind of contact. Um, Jokic's mm -hmm. reaction was because he had a, a, a scare this earlier in the season with his knee. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, a, he got a knee to his uh, thigh and his knee bent the wrong way. And he was down on the court for a few minutes. And so went to get another, a blind side shot like that. I completely understand mm -hmm. his reaction. Um, you see your career flashing before your eyes and stuff like that happens. So I understand mm -hmm. his reaction and I condone his reaction as the MVP of the NBA to set the tone for mm -hmm. his team. That we're not going to be on the court getting punked. We're going for an NBA championship here. You're not just going to mm -hmm. come on the court and get physical with us and think we're going to back down. He set the tone mm -hmm. for his team for the rest of the season with what how he handled that. The suspension was worth – that game check was worth how he handled that situation. And his team went out last night and won the game without him because True. they stepped up in his absence, absence for him because he mm -hmm. set the tone for them. Very nice. Yeah, because that's what was my point is now since – he kind of set that hard nose style that we're not going to get pushed around. Yeah. Would the other teammates, you know, pick up and come around and oh, say, yeah. you know what, this is, this is how we envision ourselves playing is if one person kind of does this, we're going to come out and be a hard nose style defense or our defensive team, or kind of a team that kind of says, you know what, we're not going to get pushed around with anybody that comes onto our court. Well, the, the, whether it's defensively, offensively, or just overall, that he set the tone that we're not, a soft pushover team. If you want to come and come through Denver right. and get a W, you're going to leave here with some mumps and bruises with that W. And so, True. like I said, that, that set the tone for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. It's already a tough place to play, but him setting mm -hmm. that tone that Denver is not, the Nuggets aren't pushovers. That's going to ride out mm -hmm. through the rest of the season. And I can see them once they're fully healthy going further than they have in the past, uh, you know, couple of seasons uh, with their playoff Got runs. It. So. Got it. So now leading into the second segment of the Wizards game yesterday, mm -hmm. now with that toughness mentality as we just talked about with Denver, I can see that now with the Wizards. I mean, they were yeah. down by 10 points, double digits in the fourth quarter, and Kuzma, all of a sudden, six three-pointers in this entire yeah. game. He actually, I mean, Bill had an off night. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that, that, that's, an, that's actually an understatement, but... Yeah. everybody around him picked up and this is what we as wizards fans were thriving and craving for for a very very long time and yeah. yesterday we saw just a glimpse of what this team can do and what this team can be and i just felt that like kuzma like his some of his shots were really i mean like those were contested shots some of the shots were under pressure shots and nine times out of ten a lot of people don't make those shots I mean, even if you're a superstar, sometimes you don't make them. And he kind of proved that, you know what, he put him on their, he put the team on his back and Beal trusted him to put the team on his back. 
And that last second shot, I believe, with a couple of seconds left in the game, game winner. And I was kind of ecstatic because I'd never seen a Wizards team like this. I guess I, I don't think I have ever seen a Wizards team like this, to be honest with you. Because yeah. <laughs> and and the, you know, their hot start to me speaks to the level of talent that they have right now, thanks to Tommy Shepard and the moves he's made in the past couple of seasons. And um, they've got a couple of West Coast swings coming up here at the end of the, this month. Mm-hmm. And then, and they've got another one in December where they're actually coming here and I will go to that game uh, on the 13th, the day before my birthday. I'll be out uh, at uh, Ball Arena if you want to catch up and get a beer or something. Anybody out there, if you want to, you know, buy me a birthday beer or something, I'm, I'll, I'll, you know, they can take bribes, anything. Uh, but um, <laughs> so th- I think um, their, their hot start to the season speaks to the level of talent that they have. Um, once the West Coast swing comes, if they have similar results, that'll speak to the difference that uh, Wes Unsell is making as a coach. Um, the talent has gotten them to, to where they are. The coaching will get them to the next level. So I'm looking forward to see how they perform on that West mm-hmm. Coast, on the couple of West Coast swings that they have coming up. Yeah, I, I agree with that because that's going to be their true testing is the West Coast swing, see how they can adjust to that style of play, that time difference between traveling and just, just sheer competition, just sheer competition about like leading into our next segment is with the Golden well, State Warriors. Before, before we do switch gears, yeah. I want to point something out that you may not even be aware of because I wasn't aware of it until I looked it up just now. Who's first place in the East? That's the Wizards. That's the Wizards. They are yeah. first place and not in just their division of these in the entire Eastern Conference. The Wizards are in first place with an eight and three oh. record. Oh, so they're in, oh, so in, wow, that I did not know. That's, they are first uh, place with the Bulls right behind them with an eight and three record, so they're tied, but uh, uh, the uh, Wizards, you know, percentage points better um, with all the other gotcha. things that drag out. So they're in first place. Um, so like I said, we'll see, we'll see if they can keep this going. My, what are you going to give them as an over-under for their, their total regular season record? Oh, geez, that's a great question. I didn't even I'll, think I'll about that. I'll set the over-under at, I'll set it at 50, right at 50. You think they'll go over 50 or under? I'll say they'll hit 50. The way they're playing, I mean, they'll hit 50. I'll yeah. say eight. I'll say they'll win 51 games because I'm superstitious. Take the over, yeah. I'll take the over on that. Yeah. And I, I couldn't agree more. more. I think, and they're, and they're not even fully healthy yet. They're just, it's a strong team. And Bill had an off night last night, but with his off night, he hit where he is for his season averages as far as 17 points. He's right around there for the season. And what that tells me is the team doesn't need him to come out there and and score 30 points a game to still win. But you still know he can do it if need be. But it's such a complete roster that he, I mean, they're they're a strong team. Trez Harrell, I mean, mm -hmm. just energy all over the court. And KCP, man, I'll tell you one thing. Like, I would, I knew he was a very good defensive player. Mm-hmm. I never knew he was this much of a defensive player. I mean, he can, Denny, he can, he can. Denny like, has, Denny had the rookie that they, from last year, he is the highest defensive rated player on the team. Who expected really? that? Who expected, yeah, where did I, that oh, come from? Yeah. I thought, I thought he'd come in and be like a point forward type, you know, handle right. the ball in, but he has come in and been not a lockdown defender. I mean, there aren't too many of those in the league anymore, but his rating right. is, he's the best on the team right now. So, yeah, and, I, and I think that, and I think with um, even Kispert, like, man, he, uh, his, his mid range game is, is, is insane. Like if he doesn't yeah. have that three point shot, he goes and he makes it. And that's kind of like, kind of puts you kind of puts the defense at a disadvantage because yeah. if he takes you off the dribble and he can shoot that, what, 18 foot jump shot. Mm-hmm. I mean, how are you going to stop that? Like if he's butter, like, I mean, if he, if, if they, if they call a specific play, you know, he's going to go there. He's going to yep. make it. Like nine we, out of ten. All of these guys we mentioned, we didn't even mention probably I, I believe the most important piece, which is Dinwiddie. Just flat, flat out baller. So and that's and we have to start mentioning his name because yeah. like he gets lost in the shuffle. And if it mm-hmm. wasn't for his guard play, I don't think this team will be at where it's at. I mean, I love Beal, but his drawback is his ball handling skills when it comes to certain positions on the court. I'm not gonna that, say all that's of it. not his his and then ball handling and, and distribution, they're not the focuses of his game. He's, he wants to score. So right. Dinwiddie, Dinwiddie is his comp, nice complimentary piece, who is also a scorer, but is all, mm-hmm. he, you know, he's going to complement and, and the fact that, you know, getting the other players involved more than, right. than Beal. Not that Bill can't. It's just it's not his focus. And it shouldn't be. That, that, right. sh- that should be on somebody mm-hmm. else's shoulders. Bill should be the guy who's out there when you need that bucket, and, you know. Yep. 
but the other guys can, can you know, they're right there with him. They can get it too when right. they need it. But they have that team now that, that he doesn't have to do it all yeah. by himself. But now yeah. leading into the West Coast swing, mm -hmm. yeah. the Golden State Warriors mm -hmm. and their incredible run, do you think that this team is back to its old championship ways or it's just finding its way from those championship teams? Now, before the season started, they were my pick to represent the Western Conference. And to, that's, that wasn't just, you know, picking a favorite or picking chalk or anything like that. No one expected them to get off to this kind of start because Clay's not back. So nobody, nobody can say that they saw this coming. I just had a feeling. Mm. I didn't know when Clay would be coming back. Um, I felt like Wiggins had developed towards the end of la end of last season. Um, the, the other young players that had to step up in Clay's absence have as well. Uh, Poole and uh, even Gary Payton Jr. is balling this year. They picked up Otto Porter, Eight. who's who's knocking Wait, down Otto threes. Otto Porter Jr. is yep. on the Golden State Warriors? And he has acclimated to their system and style. He's a three-point shooter now. And he also is a solid defender, always has been. So um, that all that. And then Steph is, is being Steph. With Steph doing his thing, and then the complimentary pieces all, all you know, mm -hmm. meshing together to help him out this season. You Again, know, another I'm, team that's not I, healthy yet. See, that's the thing, though, right? Like when I see old Wizards players leave and do amazing things on other they teams, <laughs> it, it's it, it's just it, it makes me frustrated because I like Otto Porter Jr. and I mm. like Tilly Oubre. I just oh, felt. Do you did you see what he did last night? No. <laughs> He had 37 points off the bench for Charlotte. 37? Ballin. Ballin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Uh, like he had seven I, or eight threes. Yeah. yeah. See, and, he, and, and the thing is, he's still I young. Loved, I loved Kelly, bro. I wanted them to keep him, but they, they kept yeah. Otto instead. Yeah. And the, the thing is, I just think our organization at that time was, was, was not good. They, it wasn't well run. Not yeah, and now the well run, in man. there, you know. It's Ernie, just, Ernie it had is, to go and, you know. So. It is what it is. At the end of the yeah. day, I mean, what can you do? But yeah. after this talk about Golden State trying to make the – so who do you think from both conferences will make it? Well, you have the Western as, as Golden State. Yeah. What, what do you think about the East? For the East, uh, you know, right now the top three are the Wizards, Bulls, and Nets. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if none of those three – uh, mm -hmm. Are the team that represents the East? The Bucks are in the eighth seed right now. Wouldn't be surprised if, if you know, as they they made some roster moves, so they've got to um, to to get the continuity there, get get some chemistry. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they were back representing the East. Um, once it gets down to it, Giannis is still Giannis. the best, second best player in the league to me. Steph is and will be until he retires. Um, but Giannis, <laughs> he's 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 the best player in in the East at least. Mm -hmm. And um, so I can see them back up there, not buying Brooklyn. I don't think they're deep enough mm -hmm. as a roster. I don't, I can't see Kyrie playing this season. Um, I don't think he's going to play ever, man. If they keep this wouldn't up, be surprised. I, I, I think he's like, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I think you're, I think his career is over in, in the NBA. I could if see he it. doesn't go, if he doesn't go somewhere else. Yeah. Um, like I would say, I mean, I have to agree with you with the West coast. I mean, I, I, Golden State has a great, I don't see anybody, I mean, kind of moving that kind of forward into beating Golden State into the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. I can see them going there because once they become healthy, that's going to be a scary team. Like, I really, scary. I really just want to see Steph versus LeBron in the Western Conference Finals. See, just, I was, just one I was more time. I want to, to see that. that. <laughs> I want to see that so bad. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. I was about to say the Lakers, if they can get their act together, that will be an amazing will. Western yep. Conference. They're, like, because there are no. They're nowhere near healthy either, so we can, right. we haven't seen the real team yet. Um, uh, and of course, I, you know I'm going to root for the Nuggets, but I, I don't. Getting well, there, I, can't, I can't see that yet. Um, I will. I will state this: if Jamal Jamal Murray's still out with his ACL, right? Yeah, he'll be out until he, about April. April, okay. So if he can come back, I mean, he, I don't think they're going to rush him back for the playoffs. I mean, I think he'll sit out this entire year. But with, not, he'll come back. You think so? He, yeah, definitely. Okay. They may they may make a run late. They may make mm -hmm. a run late, but I don't know. Western Conference may be tough, but they have. I mean, they have any. They they have just as good as chances, just like the Lakers. They have just no, they do. But remember from last show, we were talking about their new two hundred million dollar man, uh, Michael Porter <laughs> Jr., who is now out indefinitely 
with back issues. And this is another reason why I wouldn't have given him that deal. When they picked him, I like to pick, because he, he was a talented player and they didn't reach for him. They picked him right around where he should have been picked. But mm. in college, he had a couple of back surgeries. And I, I never trust any player who lets anybody go in and start tinkering with their back. I don't care what kind of back issues you're having. Never take mm-hmm. a doctor's word on having surgery. Once once you start messing around in there, once you go in once, it'll never be the same. You'll always have issues. Whatever mm-hmm. else you're going through, like I have cervical issues and in my cervical in my neck, my sp- cervical spine. They wanted to go in and, and take some disc out and fuse and all that. I was like, nah, I'll go ahead and do physical therapy. Nah, money. Like I, no issues with it. Yeah. You can always get better through physical therapy with ish- injuries like that. But once they go in, oh, you'll never yeah. be the same. Yeah, and we and the thing is, like, I I have a lot of ankle issues, you know. Mm. And when, when I played football back back in high school, and even mm. things, like I I I when I when I play like I, it was off. I mean, I, I was done playing. I was playing basketball, and I came down hard. I couldn't get back mm. up. I was like, this is not normal. So I went to the yeah. doctor. They were like, oh, you have no cartilage between them. And they're like, well, we we did the MRI, but we can we want to scope it, and then when we go inside and. If we can't find anything, we may not be able to walk again if we screw up. And I'm like, ah, that's okay. I, I can I can live with pain. For no, a while. I'm good. You know, <laughs> I'm good. You know? I don't think I'm good. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm not. I'm not anti-surgery. I had rotator cuff surgery, and I, you know, my shoulder is 100 percent now. But that's different. The spine right. is a different beast. I, once you start messing right. around, and you'll, you'll all yeah. if you get one surgery, you're gonna have to keep getting surgeries because it's yeah. never gonna be right. Look at Tiger. And, and the scary thing is that consent form you have to sign that consent yeah. form is very scary is because it is any major surgery may be major or minor you have to sign a consent form yeah. and that alone is also stress so it's like but i also feel that as time has progressed on there's other remedies for it for non-surgical um, procedures yeah. that can be done yeah i mean i'm not saying go and be wild and go do like other crazy remedies no it's like there's other ways like as you said physiotherapy maybe some other, maybe stretching exercises or other, maybe, by all means, we're not doctors. We're not saying, hey, don't do it. We're just saying there's there's so much research now. There's so much evidence that there's other ways of getting it. If you need surgery, then you need it. We're not going to say no. no. There's some things you just have to like kind of tread carefully. And it's your decision. If you want to get it, you get it. If not, then it's cool, you know, but just be out there. There's other options. Now, switching gears, mm-hmm. switching gears. Did you see that Broncos beatdown of the Cowgirls, a.k.a. the Cowboys? I did indeed, and I enjoyed every second of it. Um, <laughs> 30 to nothing at one point. Um, yeah, it, it reminded me of, like, um, I don't know if you played, like, Super Tecmo Bowl back in the day. Um, when you would guess. No, Jackson? No. <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah. Like, you, like, no matter how good a team was and how bad the other team's defense was, if you guessed their play, like the defense was going to shut them their offense down no matter what. And that's what that game looked like. It looked like the Broncos had Dallas's offensive game plan. Like their defense, this is after trading Von Miller. The defense looked like, oh, I mean, the, the Bears defense, Super Bowl defense or the Ravens, like they shut that offensive that offense down like they knew what was coming. So I, I got to give credit to Fangio. I'm not his biggest fan by any means, but I got to give him props for, how game they approached right? that game, their game plan, and, and on the offensive side as well, um, how, how Teddy Bridgewater not just managed the game, like he was dropping bombs on them. And then the running he game, was. like everything, it seemed like the rest of the season was preseason. And then this was game one for, for this team, how they just came out um, and looked like it just a, a completely different animal. And there's, th- that win keeps them in the hunt for the AFC West. Um, that a loss would have probably I... cost him his job, but... You think so? Yeah. He's def- oh. he has been on the hot seat, definitely. Um, mm. The fans out here, they're tired of him, as tired of him as I am. Um, mm. But that win, that was a big win on the road. Um, I think them being on the road, getting away from the home pressure, helped also mm. helped them um, to come out and get that victory. Wait, was it in Dallas? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That changes my whole perspective because I, for some reason I thought it was in Denver, but you're right. It was no, I would have Dallas. been there if it was here. <laughs> that's, that is also true. But that, so the shocker was, I think, see, that's the thing when people say, oh, Dallas is so good. Dallas is so good. I'm like, they do they have are. a very good team. I'm they not going to do it. But yeah. you can't get beat like that at home <laughs> to, to a, yeah, to a, I wouldn't say mediocre team, but to a team that's not, 
they were 500 going into the game. So that, you can't get more mediocre than that. <laughs> that is, that's true. Yeah. I, I, I would say this. You, you can't, if you're beating your other teams, like 40 to 40 points, 20 points and come here and lose, which kind of tells me that you really didn't kind of, you just thought you're going to be a walkover. And, 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 and in the NFL, you can, any given Sunday, it can go either way. Like, as you said, Matthew Stafford, I mean, that, I mean, that was clearly an example. The Rams were amazing for the last couple of weeks, but yeah. the last week and a half, I think it kind of showed how to beat them. I mean, Tennessee, by losing um, losing Derrick Henry to that like, nasty foot injury, bringing AP on, it just, they never missed a step. But that defense, I don't know what is coaching up in that defense in Tennessee or what the water is. They came to play that day, and they, I think, kind of showed how to beat the Rams. So I'm going to publicly say they're not going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and how you beat the Rams is you keep the ball in Matthew Stafford's hands. Um, yeah, you don't let them I, get the running game going. <laughs> if Matthew Stafford has to be counted on to win the game, that's not going to yeah. happen. I, I not consistently, kind of, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So I'm retracting my win. I'm, I mean, I'm still keeping that they're, they're going to go, but I'm going to say they're not going to go. So I know it sounds really weird, but the way they played that day, if if they come up across the Tennessee Titans, they're not going to win even in the tennis. Well, if they go to the Super Bowl, Tennessee goes to the Super Bowl, they're not going to win that Super Bowl. The Rams are not going to win that Super Bowl. That'll be a great Super Bowl to see again. Yeah. But <laughs> I'd love it if AP could go. If, if Adrian Peterson makes it to the Super Bowl, that'll make this season as complete yes. as 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 Cam getting back home to Carolina, which we'll touch on oh. later. Or um, you know, that that'll that'll really I really want he he deserves the ring. Um, yeah, he does. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad if the Titans won a Super Bowl this year. No, I, um, and the thing is you can't be mad at the Titans. I mean, what do you have no. to like dislike about the Titans? I mean, they have a great coach, great yeah. community, great yeah. players. I mean, at the end of the day, you want them to win. I mean, they were like back what was it the ninety was it the ninety seven Super Bowl, or was it two thousand? Oh gosh, two thousand. Uh, that feels right. Two thousand. No wait, no, that was the Ravens Super Bowl. The two thousand Ravens had that best defense, right? Yeah. So was it the ninety seven? Ninety nine. Ninety nine ish. We'll just say late nineties. Whenever somewhere they in there, the greatest somewhere show on there. turf. Y'all know what we're talking about. Yeah, the greatest show on turf. I mean, <laughs> they. They were only like a yard away from winning that Super Bowl. Yep. <laughs> London Fletcher, if I remember, was the one that made that tackle. No, it was uh, right? Mike Jones, I think is his name. Who? Mike Jones, I think, is Who? the linebacker's name. <laughs> Who? <laughs> <laughs> Mike <laughs> Jones. Shout out to Mike Jones, wherever you are. Thanks for a great song <laughs> that has been repeating over and over again. But, yeah, I mean, if they go – I mean, that'll be the, one of the greatest. Yeah, it was. Super that Bowls. was his name, Mike Jones. Wow. And the crazy thing is, um, like as you just touched on right now, Cam going back to Carolina. Let's end this segment with that. Let's end so, the football segment with Cam going back to Carolina. What do you feel about that? So, like I was saying about my season was already complete with Adrian Peterson getting another shot, but um, Cam going back home to Carolina. I just, you know, I'm not. I, nobody would ever, I've, I've been critical of Cam in the past, his, his play antics and all that stuff. Um, but I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to see him get another shot there. I think he can come in there and be effective in that scheme. Um, it's, it's a, it's a run heavy scheme um, when the running backs are healthy, which is, hasn't been the past couple of seasons with Christian McCaffrey's injuries and all that. But, um, you know, so being a run heavy scheme, that that can hopefully take some pressure off Cam. I think he'll get in there this season. PJ Walker's gonna start this week because Cam just got signed, but um mm. that hopefully Cam can get back on the field next week and go out there and show that he's he's still young, he's still got it. And um I'd love it if he could leave this team to the playoffs, um, just to shut up the critics who thought he was washed in New England. Um, See the, I think that scheme just wasn't right for him. So yeah. Like, I feel, I felt bad for him. I, I really want him to do well, even though, I mean, as you said, we, we all have our reservations about him. He is a good quarterback. You know what I'm saying? He does make, because people forget. He was, MVP. He, yeah, that's what I was about to say. He was a, you don't get to that status without being good or great. I would say, because you have to be great to be an MVP. And yeah. I, I don't know if he's a hall of famer. I, I don't know if he's in that kind of realm yet, but he can get to that stature if he's with the right team in Carolina. All he did was win. I mean, he, he had what, what, what three or four bad years? Not even. I think they only so, have one losing season during his time there. Um, and even, I think in that season, 
they still made the playoffs with a yes. seven and nine record or something yeah. like that. So might be, they year, might have another losing, losing season, but they were always um, a, consistently a playoff team. Mm-hmm, so. Mm-hmm. so I feel this with that signing, I think the Carolina Panthers are going to make some noise because all you need is one spark to spark a team's confidence. Cause right now, um, Donaldson ain't doing it. I'm sorry. He, I mean, they were at high at one point in time. Sam Donaldson ain't making that place. I mean, yeah, you beat the Jets, but uh, he's not. Uh, he's not Cam. I'll put it that way. Cam respects a little bit, but yeah, and I, I was one of the guys who was thinking the the Washington football team should look into Sam Donald in the off season, but he's shown that. Um, well, he's never healthy either, but he also he's just the last game full game he played was a disaster. So he's just showing that he just flat out doesn't have it. And um, he, he's his career, his career path from here on out is he's destined to be a backup. backup so, yeah. um, so with that extra playoff slot this season, Carolina can still get in there right now. Atlanta's in that spot and Atlanta's a pretty awful team, uh, especially yeah. defensively. If, if they can hold that spot for now, Carolina can certainly work them themselves back up and get in there. And uh, the only thing that can make this season any better is if Washington reached out and signed RG3, then I'd just have a party. I'd be so happy <laughs> seeing all these these guys get a shot back RG3. home. Uh, that, 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 that I mean, would and they be... have a need there too. So <laughs> I know they won't swallow their pride and do it, but that'd be that'd be freaking awesome if they did. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll be it, it'll be a nice homecoming. I mean, I was fooled, so I was really pissed. <clears throat> but then when you find out about what happened and how. I always, mm-hmm. I, I'm a believer in second chances. I, I am always a believer in second because people grow. You know, I mean, he was young. People can grow. They can come back. And if he if he got it, I mean, heck, why not? Kurt Warner was like in like the CFL, and all of a sudden became a Hall of Famer in the NFL. So anything can happen. Yeah, but all the things you hear about RG three, um, I actually knew. I actually knew slash know him. Um, mm-hmm. I played basketball with him. He didn't even, he didn't know about my connection to the NFL or anything. Right. And then once I, like I was talking to him, about, I brought it up to him one day and he was like, your brother's in the league. Like, so I didn't know he knew, but he actually knew. And um, so that like, mm-hmm. we developed a rapport off that connection. And I, I've spoken to him on many occasions. He couldn't nice be nicer. It couldn't nice be nicer. Mm-hmm. I watched after we were playing one day, um, like kids realized he was in their plan and like the longest line you would ever see of kids lined up to get his autograph. I bet. And I he, bet, yeah. he stood there and signed every single one. Okay. He didn't have to do that. He could have signed a couple and said, all right, you know, I saw, you know, nice seeing you. Mm-hmm. He stood there and signed every single one. And I, I have nothing but nice things to say about the dude. He's a great guy. Okay. I mean, that changes my perception because I don't, I don't know him personally, but what I've read and mm-hmm. what I've seen and then his little, you know, on his social media pages, I mean, he kind of depicts different stories and different stuff, yeah. but you know what? That's people's personal lives. You don't want to like, if they want to share, they share. If they don't want to share, they don't have to. And another I believe- dude, another dude who got that bad rap in the media, like when he got released from Philadelphia with all the gang mm-hmm. rumors and all that crap oh. and being a bad teammate, just Deshaun Jackson, when he came to Washington, he would come in and play ball too. Again, nicest guy ever. So you can't yeah. believe what the media is putting out there. They, they have an agenda. And who knows what it is, but, you know. You know, it's it's all about the money. At the end of the day, all those media outlets, they need to, to get to They got to sell online. ads, so they got to get you to watch. They have to sell ads. And, and at the end I'm of the day. I'm going to tell the truth here. Yeah, over here, we, I mean, I mean, you'll, you'll get it raw and uncut, and uh, we don't bow to a lot of individuals or anybody. We just say what we feel, and we say it, and, and um, you know, that's it is what it is. Yeah. But – Let's get to the Washington football team. They released Blew It. And Appropriate name, by the way. <laughs> 100%. And they signed, I think you pronounce the name Sly. His last name. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sly. Yeah. Sly. So yeah. they went from a Blew It to a Sly. So, and Blew It had zero. I mean, I don't know why they cut Dustin Hopkins in the first place. Yeah, he, he missed the kicks. And I know... <laughs> It's a, it's a league, like it's some of those, we, they could have lost the, the, the Giants game if it wasn't for that offside penalty. Yeah. So it, it was warranted and it was coming down, but not to go out. Once you cut them, you got, you made your decision, but not to go out and get an NFL ready kicker that you have to question. And it, it, it kind of boggles me because I think we could have won those. I think we could have won Denver if we had slide. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, so thank goodness they didn't at the time. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a fan of both teams, but being out here in Colorado, I gotta gotta side with the Broncos while I'm here. Once I come back to Virginia, then it's WFT all day. But um, <laughs> you know. So what, <laughs> but um, so with that situation, yeah. um, how fitting of them to go out and sign a guy who had never kicked in the league, hasn't kicked since 2015 in college. Um, but the slide connection makes sense because he actually kicked for Ron Rivera in Carolina. Um, and recent, most recently was with the 49ers, but when Robbie Gould got hurt and did well mm. there. So it's nice to bring in somebody who's actually kicked this season in the league and only got released because the guy who was kicking uh, ahead of him got healthy again. So yeah. um, that, that'll be a good pickup, but um, kickers aside, we got a big game this week with Tampa coming or, right. or are they going down there? No, Tampa's coming up here. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a home game. Still uh, not gonna win. <laughs> um, what what percentage chance do you give them in the, in this matchup? I mean, you got you got Heineke out there again, who who balled out against them down in Tampa last year. Or was that well, was that up it was here? Up, it was up here. Yeah, it was up here. That's right, because they won the division and Tampa was a wild card. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And we and we scored the most points on them than any other team in the playoffs. <laughs> and I sat up here like I'm out there. I'm I'm out here in Colorado, but. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? So, up here, like, see, DC. I'm torn. Yeah. See, the thing is, I'm torn about this game. The reason being, after a bye week, we never had a bye week with Ron Rivera. I mean, last year we kind of did, but this year is a different story, right? This year there's not, like, I think he tightened the screws in the, in the bye week. So I'm giving them, all right, I'm going to go. My heart says they have a 70% chance of winning this game. That's my heart. But <laughs> really, <laughs> but that's my heart. Like, okay, I'm gonna give two opinions my heart and my brain. My heart says because like, I'm a die hard, die hard, die hard. So, I'm gonna say 70% because hey, I always say anything can happen on a Sunday. Realistically, they have like maybe a 10% chance, even if that. Because if Brady gets angry at any time of his session, it's on, it's on like Donkey Kong. I don't think our defense. Um, has that capability to stop them, especially the second half. And with Jermaine Davis starting at, and I don't know if he's going to be middle or the weak side linebacker or, or the other or the strong or the other side, the strong side. It's going to be a very long day if they're going to <laughs> pick and pop. Very long day. And yeah. knowing the way we and with that Montez sweat out for four to six weeks with that broken jaw. Uh-huh. Chase is on his own. And I, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I like the backups, but they're going to they're gonna keep chipping at Chase. And until he figures out how to not get chipped and not get out of position, it's going to be a long day for, for, for the Washington football team. I mean, I want them to win, but realistically, they're not. I mean, I, I think this is an L for them. And uh, it – it, the season's already written off, in my opinion. I mean, you can't, you can't win. You can't even be in the, you can't even be in the wild card. If they do win, okay, great, but it's not, uh, it's not warranted. And with, with, and without a, and without a very solid offensive line, Heineke's going to be in trouble because you got Vita Vea, you got a lot of those guys, and you got, Sue. you know, yeah, yeah, Vita Vea, Sue, and those linebackers are very, very good. So it's going to be a long afternoon, a very long afternoon. See, I, I, my percentage would be about 2%, and that's only because injuries happen in football. Tom Brady got hurt. They might have a shot to beat Blaine Gabbert. But um, outside of that, I'm considering cashing up my 401k and going all in on this one. I, there is no chance besides, uh, say, for injury that Washington can win this game because Tampa is also coming off a bye and they are also coming off a loss. So Tom yes. Brady's going to go out there guns ablaze, and he, he's going to probably have the best game of the season in this game. He's yeah. going to light that uh, secondary up. Um, yeah. And, and Antonio the Brown's going to have the game of his life. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he, he, he threw that pick six yeah. or was it – oh, he threw that last second. I don't know if it was a pick six, but he, but he threw a Might pick. It was a pick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was a pick, yeah. But – like <laughs> he's he he's just looking at this game to be like you know what this is gonna be my re- this will be the best game of my career so he's gonna like, use I'm putting yeah he's gonna he's gonna come out and use the motivation that he used last season in the playoff game was when Chan, when Chase Young was saying we want Brady he's gonna use that same motivation from last year oh, come on and just God. take it out on them yeah I, I'm but, seeing twenty uh, plus point margin 20 of victory plus 20 margin of victory yeah yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a bloodbath, man. I I hate to say it, but hey, if if the team wins, if the Washington football team wins, I will eat crow and I'll say, hey, I was wrong. But I mean, like, like statistically and talent wise, if we don't, we ha- I'll put it this way: they have to play a perfect game. Have to play a perfect game, meaning special teams, offense, and defense have to be perfect. No penalties. Do what you do best and no turnovers. You do that, you have a shot of winning this game. To me, but, if they play a perfect game, that keeps it within 10 points. But yeah, I don't think I think a perfect game they can't. Well, I think I think they need the luck of an injury to win the game. <laughs> <laughs> that or you can't have ready driving. If 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 Tampa Bay is losing that game by let's say less than seven points, Brady cannot have the ball in his hands at that time. He, he just can't. Because you know that's going to be a double. Because the kicker is better than our kicker. Because our kicker hasn't – I don't know how our kicker is going to do. <laughs> I think I, I, that is not, for me, an area of concern anymore. I'm st- To me, the biggest area of concern of the team is – um, the lack of well, well that yes, but that's due to the complete lack of pass rush, which which makes the secondary just look bad. Um, and so, yeah, maybe Chase can get it going this week. Maybe he can use the motivation of his words from last year and come out and get it going. Maybe maybe his season starts this Sunday. And then uh, another area of concern yeah. is also inconsistency on now, offense. And maybe Heineke can re you know harken back to the way mm-hmm. he played in the playoff game last year and bring it. So do you think, because I have my opinions on Chase right now and also Heineke in the sense that I think they're doing too much and getting little results. Like, do what you know best. Don't over don't overperform in the sense that, like, Chase is in his second year. I mean, he's still young. He's like only 22 years old. He's going to learn to get great and get better. But he needs to understand that he shouldn't do more than he's expected to like stay in, stay in your lane stay in your gap because if you do as ron rivera says coach ron rivera says you'll get your sacks you'll get the opportunities i think he's trying too hard because the team itself is not at where they feel it needs to be because john allen is playing like a beast um pain is playing like oh, a beast. Yeah. it's just the, yeah. it, 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 and ionitis is beast i love i love ionitis i'm sorry he's just a monster yeah but the two ends, and I think those um, Sweat and um, Chase, they play off of each other. And mm-hmm. I think something of the other is not like, I don't know if it's a mental thing or they're overdoing something. And, 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 and that's what I feel. For me, for Chase, is like, and I think we touched on this in a previous episode, yeah. it's just a complete lack of moves. And his coach called him out on that this week, finally. Yeah, he did. Said, you know, he just doesn't have any moves. And he doesn't. What he and, and that he's not going to develop moves in season. So I think this season is, is going to be a wash as far as his con, career is concerned. He, he's going to have to chalk up a second year to just a sophomore slump. But what he needs to do in the off season is reach out to a guy like Dwight Freeney, who was all moves. He didn't yeah. have the ball rush. He had he was fast, but he didn't always use a speed rush to beat you. He had the most sick spin move in the history of football. So you reach out to a guy like that. And not just pick his brain, but like meet up somewhere and go over technique to, to develop mm-hmm. some moves. And then next season, come out and dominate the way a player like him should. Not He's a physical even that, specimen. That, not even that. We have, we have our homegrown talent like Dexter Manley and Charles Manley. But Dexter, Dexter Manley, those two dudes were bull rushers and they were interior rushers too. But they just were overpowering people in that day. So I don't know what they could teach him as far as technique. He has the power part down. He really needs to reach out mm-hmm. to somebody who like uh, nah he he was flat out (laughs) speed rusher too but Mm -hmm. like i said with freeney technique guy and i'm sure somebody like him would love to to mentor a guy like him oh yeah uh, because he'd be able to take some credit khalil mack he he is a pretty fully developed and solid speed rusher too he he would probably help if he reached out but i'm these guys are contemporaries and they don't really want to help guys who aren't on the team that's what Mm -hmm. i would assume but then again receivers get together and have camps in the off season so who knows Uh, for me it's worth a text or a phone call saying, hey, man, you know, True. have some I, struggles I, I, this season. You know, can, yeah. I, can I pick your brain? You know, what, what can I do right. to, to and get better? Yeah, so, and, and, and Dwight Freeney will be, as you said, he, he would love to do. Like, I'm sure he would. I don't yeah, know him. Never met him, but I'm, I'm, I can't yeah. see him turning down an opportunity like that to help out a young player. Oh, 100% hands down. So we're getting close to the end of our segment. Um, yeah, and before we wrap up the, the sports part, um, 
as far as uh, I had some other things I want to touch on, but they've uh, slipped my mind here. So we're going to, are we, are we going to completely switch gears here and go into like Thanksgiving and all that? Or, or did you have something uh, else you wanted to touch we, on? We, 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 we touched on that later. What, what do you have on your mind? Uh, did, like I said, it just slipped my mind. So I, I was going to bring mm -hmm. something up, but as soon as I said that, it was like in, in and out, it was gone. So that's what I was saying. Uh, are, you, are we going to completely switch gears here? No, no, we, we, can still, we, we can still stick with the, the thing because I didn't know if we wanted to go to the next segment because right now I was like, you know, if you want to do a pick games or something to get. Let's see. Uh oh, we got uh, <laughs> we got Aaron Rodgers coming back this week. <laughs> yeah. And, and and along those lines, where do you think Odell's going to end up? He hasn't signed yet. So what do you think? My... Like narrow so... down to a top three. What do you think? <sighs> I'm going to say because I don't think he's going to choose Green Bay for Me some neither. reason. I think you might choose this, that, and you can't go partying in Green Bay. There's nothing to True. do besides go. So if is he a big party? Streets, I don't. He he goes out. I think he goes out. I mean, I mean, I he was I've in New York. Really followed him I mean, like that. I don't know. The, the thing is, like, he was in New York for a while, and New uh, York's the big apple. So I, I'm just judging by like he may not. He might just a, a chill guy. But if you live in New York, I mean, it, if you're on your off days, you're probably going to go out and have some fun. So, and he's still young too. So I, I think he wants a place where he can enjoy himself, mm. not going out or he just enjoy himself and the thing. And also the weather, I would say he may sign with the Saints, but it's, I think it has to be quarterback play. So maybe in Tampa Bay said they're not going to sign him, which is stupid. I mean, I, I was, I, I didn't agree with Arians when he said, oh, there's two, we have AB. I'm like, yeah, but this is o, this is Odell. Like there's a difference he was, between. I don't know if you, if you heard it, but the way he answered was just, the, like his tone was like a sarcastic, you know, just just answering the question just to answer it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's due to a lack of interest. I think what they with the way their roster is constructed with the guys they brought back all twenty two starters. They just don't have the money to, to compete with true. the other yeah. guys, uh, teams in the running. Um, I see the Saints as an option because it's going home. Uh, he played at yeah. LSU, but right. their quarterback play might like take Perfect. them off the board as far as far as consideration. Um, I think mm -hmm. the Seahawks are in play. The Packers are on play for an, from an opportunity standpoint as far as getting the balls, but um, I can't see him going to that cold water. I, th I think uh, the Chiefs are probably the most. Uh, most yeah. they, they'd but be I'll, my pick. I'll put it this way. If Aaron Rodgers comes back full-fledged, I think he'll play with Aaron Rodgers. I think he'll choose Green Bay only because that gives them an opportunity to win a ring. When, yeah, that's the only thing I'm saying. Because Kansas City now doesn't look like Kansas City of old. No, they, they, they're, they're having their struggles. Defense is off. A, yeah, their, their defense is an offense is struggling too. So. Yeah, so I don't think he wants to go to a place where he has to be the dude. Like, I mean, Tyree Kill. I mean, it's surprising. Maybe I'm maybe I'm missing the point on Tyree Kill, but I think teams have kind of covered him well, or he's or, or I don't know like, that it, I don't know that it's him. I think Mahomes is still not fully mentally back yet from his injury from last year. Um, he's not too, playing yeah. the same. His arm doesn't even look the same. And he had a, a lower body injury. It's just when, right. once you have those lower body injuries, it, it, it's in your mind for the next year. And he could be, he could have those struggles throughout the rest of the season, but next year he'll come back and be Mahomes again. Yeah, he'll be the normal uh, thing. I mean, I, I think teams have to have like that curve. They'll do really, really well, and then they'll falter a little bit down. And people got to understand that. So I'm choosing Green Bay for early, for Odell to go to Green Bay, Rodgers will be back. And, I, and, and with his apology from what he said, um, take it what you may. He had to have done that if he wanted to continue to play. So he's, he, he's coming back. And, if, he, and if, if he's back by next Sunday, Odell will be a Green Bay Packer. I think Rodgers, if he has two, positive, two negative tests before the game this week, he'll play this week against Seattle. Um, oh, really? a game they, yeah, a game they won't win either that, way. Okay. But because um, you don't back. think they'll win, Russ is back. So that's he's been a, an injury, though. Man. He's been that's a he's be... been a he's been a full participant in practice this week, uh, fully cleared to play. Mm. So he's back. I think uh, Seattle is, and they're they know that their backs up are up against the wall. This is absolute must win game. If they lose, they're out of consideration for the playoffs. So I don't think there's any way they will lose this game, whether Rodgers is back or not. Is it in um, Seattle? It's in Green Bay, and I still Ooh. think they'll go out there and win. They're, they haven't win. been the best road team on. Uh, you know, since they they've had their their run at home uh, out there at CenturyLink, which mm -hmm. is probably a new name by now. Who knows? But, but um, Century, you mean the Seattle, Field. Is, 
Oh Jesus! All right, that's a, that's a, that's another topic for a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, during this discussion, I've just talked myself out of the Kansas City thing. I can I can see Odell going to Seattle. I can see that happen. Uh, see, I think that can happen if if all is well with 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 Russell Wilson. I would say that's going to be the number one choice. One yep. A. If Rogers is if Rogers reaches out to Odell, which I think he might have. We don't know what's happening behind the scenes. And I think Russell may have too. Knowing these guys are a very tight click. And I think I think Rodgers has a better sell, in my opinion, because you already have what Deontay Adams, you already have um like you you already have a group of receivers that are set or pretty cool, kind of kind of gelling with that. You bring OBJ Odell Beckham into that, OBJ into that mix. I mean, they're on top of that offense. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, and with Seattle. Yeah. I don't think he'll mesh well, in my opinion, with the coaching and also with he'll he'll, he'll mesh with Russell and and um, um the man child over there. What's he what's his name? Uh, Metcalf. Uh, Metcalf, yeah, he'll mesh well with them. But I think, yeah, that, that dude is super fun. <laughs> Reminds me of me. True. Ten years ago or so, ten years ago. <laughs> but I, I just feel there's something to me that says he's 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 gonna join Green Bay. I don't know why. I just feel that he's joining it, and if on paper that's the best fit, yeah, on paper, yeah. I, I just feel he has that opportunity, but uh, if he goes to Seattle, I think he may not get. I don't. I think his career may take a dip. I mean, he only left the. the he only left Cleveland because he just had a. He just, he just wasn't getting the ball. <laughs> yeah, completely I mean, off the. Like this is not even a team that has been bandied about in, in consideration, but I think the best fit, and we can wrap up this segment with this. I think the best fit for him would be going to Atlanta, who lost to Leo Jones and who Calvin Ridley is having his mental health issues right now and has been out. I think if he went there, he'd be a number one guy, Matt Ryan's number one target. And that, that to me, that would be the best move for his career, but it's not going to happen because they haven't even been mentioned. But that's that's what I think would be best for him. But um, I, I, I I'll leave that right there. Too. Yeah. <laughs> So, so let's uh, yeah, let's we, completely switch you, gears so here. So do you want to <laughs> so let, let's so do you want to tell our audience? Oh, before we go, um, uh, please like and subscribe to yeah. our channel. Um, Show some support. We'll support please, you too. If you got something going yeah, on, we'll shout please, you out. Yeah, please comment too. Like this is we, we we want your feedback. We want to see like how we can improve, how we can go forth, and you know we're all we're learning as we are going. So please like subscribe. Give us your comments, positive or negative. We, we're here. We just want to know feedback. If you guys want us to do like, you know, shorter videos, longer videos, you know, we're here for yeah, you throw guys. Throw the feedback the at us. Yeah. yeah, throw some feedback and, and at us. Before we um, get to the last segment, we've got a, a very special guest coming up. Um, we might we may do a Saturday recording, but on our next Saturday show, uh, we've got a special guest should, coming should, up. Should, I think we should just should tease, we tease it? a little. We should, we should tease I, it. I will, I will save the name. Um, if you if you've been monitoring our Twitter, you'll know who it is. But um, uh, I will save the name. Um, it'll be a surprise guest. Um, but he's he's a pretty well known uh, name in the in the DC radio market, and I'm very excited to have him on the show. He's he's a great guy. I've, I've spoken to him before. Um, good dude. Looking forward to having them on the Talk Wizards, and uh, yep. we'll we'll just we'll tease and and give you the name uh, when it when it comes up. Yep. Yep. Well, we'll do. We'll, we'll do it. So our, so hopefully um, this Saturday we'll have another, we'll have another yeah. show and uh, we'll release yeah. the videos on Saturday. Um, be, we'll, be we'll release, we, can, we can put this one out today. Oh, we can put that. Okay. We will put this yeah. one out today. Sorry. It's just or tomorrow. You know, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll whenever see. I can. Uh, yeah. But Saturday it's, we may have a special guest as well. Either my, my brother Chris to talk football or, or mm -hmm. uh, David, who's a friend of ours to come on and talk gambling. We'll see. Yeah. I'll, I'll release that on Twitter once I can, once I lock it in too. So yeah. just stay tuned. So, so, we're, so you guys are getting everything. You're gonna get, a, you're gonna get a casino around. You're gonna get like great analysis on quarterbacks and football in general. And then some so good our wizard show talk. is, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's gonna be a very interesting. So please tune in. Yes, um, indeed. If you guys can. It, we, we would love to. And since Thanksgiving is oh, it's next week, right? It is the week after. The week after. Yeah, yeah, since Thanksgiving is a week after, and now I, I, I was at Walmart yesterday shopping for some, you know, some milk and eggs. They, people are shopping now. I mean, I went to yeah. Walmart. I saw ninety-eight cent turkeys, and Arthur was like, ninety-eight cent turkeys." I'm like, "Yeah, you don't want the ninety-eight cent turkey, but it's a turkey." But people hey, are shopping. Turkey is turkey, no matter what it is. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yes, yes. My opinion. <laughs> yes. So what I wanted to ask, I mean, yeah, I, I, we'll do a Thanksgiving, um, we'll, we'll do a day after Thanksgiving show, but since things- I think I have to work that day. <laughs> Saturday you know, we can do it. That's Saturday, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, Saturday, yeah, yeah. So, the, yeah. so the day after like, Thanksgiving yeah, yeah, yeah. show. Yeah. Um, since everything's getting prepped and I, and people actually start making menus now so they can mm -hmm. prep for yep. the next week. We have our menu set. Yeah, so do, so do I. And yeah. I would like to ask, what do you, what is your like family going to do for Thanksgiving? Like, what is your prep? What is, what is your food going to be? Like, so what's your best dishes? We've got it set, but I don't have it in the forefront of my mind because I'm only doing a portion of the cooking. Um, right. I'm going to cook. Um, since I'm a vegetarian, I got to, you know, get some options for myself there. But um, as far as what we're, of course, going to have, we're going, first of all, what we're doing, we're going down to my sister's south down in Colorado Springs. We're going to have a, a family get together. Hopefully my mom can come to town too. We'll see how, how that all works out. But um, mm -hmm. we're going to go down there. Um, turkey, of course, is on the menu. Mac and cheese is a staple for me. Um, we're going to have some nice homemade biscuits. Either I'll make them or my mom comes, she'll make them. And then I've got a specialty my broccoli pie casserole that's based on the green bean casserole. Um, mm. I'll release the recipe if somebody's interested. It's, it's probably the best thing I've ever eaten. Delicious, um, amazing. by the way. Yeah, Delicious. amazing. Yeah, so, that, you know, our spread is going to be very traditional. And throw in there some margaritas, too, uh, some football during the day, you know, all very that nice. fun stuff. How about you? What do you all have? Uh, first of all, what are, you, what are you doing? And then what's on the menu? So so we're probably going to stay home this time around. Mm -hmm. We usually go up to it. For the last couple of years, we've we been staying kind of home because mm -hmm. going up to our cousin's place in Maryland is a little bit further from us. Yep. And then and sometimes we have to work the next day. So it's kind of like, you know, Do you driving. this year? You got to work this year yeah. after? Yeah, this year we, I, I, I think I would have to work this year. So it kind of plans around certain things. So what, so I do all the cooking on Thanksgiving. I live mm -hmm. in RD, like kind of take a break. So since she's a little bit, like since she's a vegetarian, I don't mm -hmm. like me. But yeah, exactly. Like just like the L. So what I do is in the morning I make like cheese biscuits, like from uh, oh. Red Lobster. So I get that. Um, I get the. You can't uh, beat that. That that's yeah. two thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, those cheese biscuits from Red Lobster. Oh, I, I don't yeah. know what they put oh, in man. it. So it, it's it's amazing. So I usually like crack, like have like a crack biscuits. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's it's phenomenal. So this year I have yeah. to go and get the the batter and the like. You know, I have to go get that. I, I still have to make a shopping list, but usually. I'll make that then i'll probably have like maybe some croissants or some some biscuits in the morning like pillsbury mm -hmm. and then for lunch i will have like maybe mac and cheese and maybe like some sort of like rice dish for her and then for mm -hmm. dinner um since like it's a pretty like like we'll have like lasagna and some like you know maybe french fries or some uh, you know so, so something something light and then maybe like have like a, a, a like a mocktail kind of drink mm -hmm. this year so i gotta yeah. figure out like what mocktail i want to make last year i made some sort of like I made a virgin mojito, which is really good. So I was like, okay, so this year I may, may like introduce maybe like an orange kind of drink. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then, yeah, so so you guys, you know, when Thanksgiving does roll around, we will, I'm going to like, we'll hopefully we can share some pictures or anything. Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Kind of put something up and then you guys can see what we did. And hopefully, you know, we can end this and end Thanksgiving with a nice collage and, and be full and happy. Yes, indeed. But yeah, we can uh, go ahead and close things out here. It's been a great show. Got a lot of things off my chest that, uh, you know, I, like I said, I'd have been anxious to talk about. And we didn't really go into everything. I mean, so much is going on, which is, yeah. which is great for a format like ours. It keeps us busy, uh, keeps us watching, and uh, hopefully keeps you all watching and wanting to engage. So please do. Like I said, you can reach us on the, at the Talking Hats on Twitter. Uh, Talking Hats Podcast at Gmail, Talking Hats HD on TikTok. I'll get some videos up there soon. Hopefully, if I go to the Nuggets game tonight or um, tomorrow night, um, I'll put some stuff up. And then, or you could give us a call. Um, I, I, I put our, I tweet out our recording schedule. So if you want to call during the show live, it's 720 uh, 735 2342. Or if you call off hours and you reach us, um, you know, we can probably get it. I can, if I'm not working or out of the house, I'll get a Zoom going, talk to you anytime if you want to give us a call. So just uh, please engage, give us the feedback, let us know where you're at. Um, you know where we're at. Reach us on one of those formats, and it's been a pleasure. Awesome. Peace yes, sir. Love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace out.